Okay. Goodbye. How are you guys? Hi, can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? Hi, Carrie, I can hear you. All right, good. Hi, Donna. All right. Um, I see that Kathy needed the link again. Let me send her the link. Hmm? Hey, Cristina.
Hi, Kathy. Hi, Carrie. All right, it's seven o'clock. Um, we still need what, one more person from the board so we can start. Um, so we need to wait for either Karen Ann or Joy or Sarah Jean. Gotcha. Christina, did um, Richie like all the graduation stuff? Uh, yeah, yeah. Today was really cute, wasn't it? It was, it was really great. They did a, a, a wonderful job. Yeah, I thank you, I thought so. Yeah, yeah, I ended up crying. I, I cried when that all started, that was, it was moving, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't, Richie didn't cry. <laughs> <laughs> I need to watch the graduation video that I haven't seen yet. But. It was really good. Good. Yeah. It's a hot day, so. Uh, were you guys out there for like three hours? We got there at 8.30 and we left around 12.15. <laughs> so, yeah. It was hot. <clears throat> We have a full house, but no quorum yet. I'm gonna call Joy. Do you oh, mind? I think, I think this is Karen Ann. Cam Tudor's Karen Ann. Yes, okay. Oh, good. Karen Ann, can you hear us? Mm. Oh, is that you, Karen Ann? We lost Karen Ann. Oh, and Erica, congratulations to you too. I hope you had a good good couple of days. She's not listening. That's okay. <laughs> All right. I think Karen Ann dropped. Elena, did you get Joy on the phone? She didn't pick up. I want to text her. Here comes Karen Ann again. <clears throat> Karen Ann, can you hear us? Yeah, I had to shut everything back down again because this computer is just crap. So I have audio, I just don't have video. All right, well, we're glad that you're here with us <laughs> in, in any form. Okay, so we can, 
um, start the meeting. Um, so we will start the meeting at 7.05. The first item on the agenda is um, presentation discussion with Donna Latensix. I butcher your last name every time, Donna. I apologize. That's I okay. think the first thing that um, we would like to ask you to help us understand is the current budget, the current state of library budget, where we're sort of at right now. Okay, I like to start with the revenue side of the budget and your revenue budget was $194,000 and as of today, your revenue that you took in is $195,000 and I can see that your interest income was a little higher than you budgeted, so that's good. Your patron fees are a little less than you budgeted but you have a net favorable income of about $1,000. So that's a good thing. Now on to the expenditure side of the budget. Your expenditure budget is overspent by about $17,000 and some of that expense is COVID related and there is a reimbursement that we are expecting. So that's your COVID expenditures are about $7,500. So when you factor that in, your expenditure budget is overspent by about $10,000. So when I look to the line item detail, I can see that all of the salary line items are overspent. And now I'm on the balance sheet and back on July 1st, 2019, you started the year with $392,000 in all of your accounts. And since now you're overspent by about $10,000, your balance in all of your cash accounts is about $382,000. So that's your budget recap. Can I, um, is there any way that, I don't have that sheet in front of me. Is there any way that you can share your screen with it on so we can see it or you can email it to me and I can share my screen? I can do that. I will email it to you and you, you can share your screen. It is what I emailed to you last week. Okay. So you, you have that already. All right, great. Me... And I updated it today. Uh, let me look for it. Okay. All right, let me. All right. Is is this what we're going over? That, that is your budget request for next year, 2021. Okay. But you have on there, you know, your 1920 expenses, and that's only through April. So that's a bit out of date. Right, let me try again. All right, hold on one second. If 
anyone else on the board has this and can send it to me. I've got it open on my computer, Carrie. Oh, okay. Can you share your screen? I don't know. That's what I'm looking for right now is to see if I can share my screen. Usually, yeah, but it's in the email. It's you sent the June special meeting and the other PDF there is the budget. I believe that she's looking at with a few adjustments as of today. Oh, so just okay. let's see if this is it. Okay, good. There it is. So now you're looking at your revenue budget, which is 194,636. And then if you look on the next, like the year to date, uh-huh, just about where your cursor is, and it's highlighted in yellow, you can see that the revenue that you've taken in year to date is 195,668. So you see that you have a favorable, of about $1,000. And then if you look at the line items above, you can see interest in your stiff account that you you took in $3,700. And then, you know, your donations account looks like earned interest of $3,100. So that's, you know, two favorable items. Then as I look down, there's donations account that earned $1,600 in interest and your patron fees was budgeted for $4,200. You only took in $3,000 so far, so you're running a little short there. And the $45,000, which is showing as a credit, and the, the line item is library state aid, that is a refund because last fiscal year, the town mistakenly transferred $4,500 revenue to the library that didn't belong to the library. So this year to correct that it was transferred back. Okay. All right. Um, do you know the overage on the the payroll, the overage on the uh, the salaries. Yes. Does that include um, the the payroll protection? I I can't remember what the act was called. That that we were told uh, the library would be covered as part of the the COVID package. Does any of this make sense? Yes, it makes sense. But I don't know about the payroll protection for the library because. Um, I haven't seen any information on payroll protection for any employees. So I'm not sure about that. I'll have to look into that. Okay. So any employees, you mean any employees for the library? Or for the town, the fire department. Okay. Okay. I got you. Um, I think Joy just is joining. We'll give her a second. I see that you want to say something, Elena. Joy, can you hear us? No, I cannot hear you again. No, how the hell do I tap? If it helps, we can hear you. I have the wrong code to my phone. All right, uh, while Joy, you get that figured out, we'll be here. The chair recognizes Elena Testa. Elena Testa, Vice Chair. Then I have a question to you. So as I understood it correctly, uh, 392,000 you referred to, uh, where we have a shortage of 10,000, this is our investment fund, yes? Yes, it is investment funds, savings, yes. So, um, then my next question, how did that happen that we have 10,000, we somehow spent 10,000 without the board being unaware? Uh, what's the process of taking that money out and using it? As far as I know, there are only two signatures on the bank account, uh, Kitty's and mine. Oh, I was unaware of anything like this, so I don't know about Kitty. So, 
how could that be how could that ha i just want to know the procedure what requires um for that money from the investment to be withdrawn to be spent thank you elena donna can you have any answers anything that you can help us understand Yes, I'll try to help you understand. So as the invoices for the library are received, they are approved for payment by the director. So that's the first step in the process. And then Oh, that has to be reset. I think Oliver did something. And then the no. library board um, should, the treasurer of the library board should be presenting monthly financial reports to the library board. Yeah, I understand. But how did that happen that we spent 10,000 from investment? That's my, towards my previous question. That's that's it. Elena, we do, there's lots of people. We do need to make sure that we're identifying ourselves and we're waiting to be recognized before. The chair recognizes Elena Testa. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, it's just, it's just, I thought it's towards my previous question. I just want to know the procedure, how the money from our investment fund uh, can be spent. Uh, I did not, I did not think it's that easy that it needs just director's approval. I, I think director has a authority over only over payrolls and not over our investment account. And now I could see minus 10,000 on investment and nobody is aware of how that happened. So where, is there a way to trace where did the money actually go from that account? Yes. Yes, we have a full accounting. So can you tell us where did the money, where the money went? Are you asking what the money was spent on? Yes, from the investment fund. Yeah, so it would have been spent from the library operation savings account. And if you look to the expenditure report, you could see the, see the line items for detail that the money was spent on. So each, payroll line item was overspent. Director salary, program coordinator salary, assistant one salary, pages salary, custodian salary. So all of those are overspent. Then your next category is the building. And we can see some of those overspent as well. Building maintenance overspent. Miscellaneous is overspent. And the third category is programs. And that category has a favorable of $8,000. So that leaves you with a net expenditure, over expenditure of about $10,000. The chair recognizes Elena Testa. Elena Testa, Vice Chair. Sorry, Donna. So does it mean, uh, a little bit, I'm sorry if, if I did not understand it correctly right away. So the 10,000 shortage, which we yes. have on our budget, came out from our investment. We covered it from our investment. So it's not that we have 10,000 10, on the budget shortage and 10,000 short spent or spent on investment fund. It's just one 10,000, not 20, yes? It's just one 10,000. Okay, so we covered that shortage from our investment fund. That's, that's what happened. This year, yes, that's exactly what happened. So, and there is no procedure for us um, to, uh, we do not need the board authorization before we spend money from the investment fund. Anybody like, like the town hall, like you can just take it from there. 
Yes, we just want to understand how it works. So how it works is you are a special revenue fund and you're taking in revenue. So your, your investment income, your, you could do fundraising revenue. You, can, you are generating revenue and you are, the library board is welcome to spend whatever revenue they take in. It's, it's their money. It's library board money and it's your decision your board decision to spend that money and you know how on, on what you want and how you want to spend it so so you are in the same category as the rec commission and the dog fund those funds can spend their fund balance if they want to in a year and or not you can spend more than your budget you can spend less than your budget because you have a fund balance that is yours to spend all right thank you donna um i i see that uh mr roseboro is here um uh, mr roseboro i'm wondering is there could you help us understand what's going on Yeah, this is not Mr. Roseboro. It's Hope. Oh. Yeah, and Deb. I see. Okay, I'm okay. Um, all right. So, yes, I am at a loss. So, oh, sorry, Mr. Carey. Oops. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, I. It, it, who, I know lots of people don't have their audio on. Is this, oh, hi, okay. Um, Deb, I'm wondering if you, I, I know that there had been talk about the payroll being covered by the payroll protection thing, stimulus package from COVID. Is this, do you have any knowledge about this? I've heard about it, I was aware of it. That's what Clee, um, made sure we'd be able to get once he did what he did. Um, I don't know as far as how far it's gotten or if you have to apply to it, uh, apply for it or whatever, but that, that was money that he did say we would be entitled to eventually and that we would, the town would get it back. I also know that uh, earlier on, uh, it was my belief that he had also given up uh, $10,000 of his own money that was supposed to be for insurances. I know we had gotten Christmas bonuses out of that and that money was supposed to go for uh, salary raises. Um, I also know you talked about maintenance um, overspent. Now I know a lot of that, my, uh, the library was falling apart and uh, unfortunately all at once and a lot of things got done but a lot of things, um, insurance claims are being or have been submitted and there should be money coming back from that. What it all equals, I, I don't know. Um, not that we probably couldn't find out for you. But, um, you know, there was money, so I, it, I'm feeling like it might look not so good now, but there's money that's supposed to be coming back that's supposed to be put towards that. All right, thank you. I, I appreciate it. I know that sort of put you on the spot there. No, no, I can only tell you what I know. All right. Or heard or... Um, Donna, so moving forward, is there any suggestions that, that you have for us? Anything that I, what, what's our bottom line here? My suggestion is at, to review your financial report every month at your monthly board meeting and and if it's not where the board wants to be in terms of expenditures, then correct your course. Thank you. This uh, sort of dovetails with the, the next thing. I know that since I came on the board, the role of the board treasurer has been, no one's been able to define it or explain it. 
can you explain what the roles and responsibilities of board treasurer are? I know of the two duties for the board treasurer, and that is one, presenting the budget to the board of finance. And the second duty is presenting the monthly reports to the board. And I'm sure there's other things, and I'm sure there's state of Connecticut um, defined duties. I just don't know what they are. Okay. Do you have any suggestions where we could find out those other duties? Yes. This is the board, right. Do you have any way to we, we, where can we find these things? Hold on. Okay. I'm sorry, Donna. What? I would maybe research with the with the um, state library and see um, if they have some guidance for you or maybe past treasurers of the board if you don't have anything defined in your procedures for roles and responsibilities for your board treasurer all right thank you the chair recognizes elena testa in the test of vice chair i know for sure we have the clear description of trust of um treasurers um treasurer's obligations, whatever treasurer needs to do. It's just it was messed up while Dana is here. It was messed up because some of those obligations went uh, to the town hall. That's where the mixing point is for us. That's why we were asking. So, but Dana replied exactly what, what she's responsible for. I guess it's up to us already to coordinate it just with our policies, whatever we have. And we do have it. So I'll make Here. sure. Sorry, Elena, didn't mean to cut you off. Carrie, when you get a chance, I can't raise my hand, sorry. Oh, yes, thank you, Karen Ann, sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry, Elena, for cutting you off. Karen Ann, treasurer, <laughs> this is the problem. Okay, the State Library Association Charter Bylaws says the treasurer is responsible for the receipt and recording of all funds, pays bills that have been approved by the president and makes financial reports at meetings of the executive board and of the association. But I was told when I, and I have only been treasurer for what, two weeks, Carrie? <laughs> About two weeks, yeah. But I was told that a lot of this was being taken over by the town, and therefore I didn't have all these obligations of paying receipts and that sort of thing. So that's where my issue is, is that what I've been told I need to do versus what the State Library Association says is the treasurer's job don't mesh. Thank you, Karen Ann. Um, Donna, and I, I hate to keep putting you on the spot, um, but is there, is what Karen Ann is saying, the, the roles that the board uh, treasurer needs, which ones are now covered by the town? I'm sorry, you're breaking up a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I was asking if, if you were able to hear Karen Ann's uh, reading of what the, the State Library says the role of the treasurer is. Yes, I heard. Which of it, those roles are now covered by the town? Okay, so there is an agreement between the library board and the town that the town is going to be paying the bills for the library and posting the receipts for the library. It's just bookkeeping to help the library out, but the town book finance office has no, no control over the library budget. We're just bookkeeping, just to help out the volunteer treasurer at the library. But it is still the library board's responsibility to look at the monthly financial reports and make sure that everything is, um, you know, where they want it to be. Right, right. That makes sense. Does that help clear things up, Karen Ann? Well, it seems to me then if, I, if I'm looking at the, what the state says and Donna says the town's doing a lot of it, then my big thing is to take the monthly reports create a readable report and present it. Is that correct? 
And then when we have our monthly meetings, we all at the board review what I've presented. Does that sound right? Does that about sum it up, Donna? Yes. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, Donna, because I just had no idea what I was supposed to do. <laughs> All right, the chair recognizes Elena Testa. Elena Testa, vice chair. Um, in our bylaws, it's just three sentences. Uh, Karen, in, if you will look look them up, he, he, I emailed them to you, to everyone, a couple, week, couple of weeks ago. I have them open. Yeah, it has, it says uh, Article 4, the end of the Article 4, it says the treasurer will keep an itemized account of all funds. Second, expenditures will be approved by the treasurer and the board as necessary, which we totally skipped. Well, we did not know we're learning, sorry, learning curve. The treasurer will present a written account at each regular meeting of the board, nothing else. So it's exactly how you understood. I think we can just stop it right there. Okay. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you. Uh, the chair recognizes uh, Erica Wazinski. Thank you, Carrie. Um, do you have, if you don't have it and your board doesn't have, we can get you a copy of the agreement between the town and the library board for the services to help clarify just the services part. And that might be helpful. I believe it was signed before this board went into effect. So just so that you have a copy of it for um, uh, information purposes would help um, the understanding of what Donna is saying to you. So we're really just doing the bookkeeping side. The yes or no of the spending still comes from the library side. All right, but thank you. Yes, that, I think that, that agreement should clear some of that up. Wonderful. Yes. All right, are there any other comments from the board? Okay, the next agenda item is a presentation by Christina Mailhos. Um, she's going to explain some of the resources offered by the Connecticut Conference of Municipalities. Um, Christina, hi there. Hi. Hi. I'm. I'm um, I think I know most almost everybody. Um, in case you don't know me, I was uh, first selectman from 2009 through 2017. And in that time, I um, worked a lot with CCM, which the town has a, um, a subscription with, I guess you would say. Uh, we pay an annual fee and we have access to some of their services. And um, they have a lot of resources for towns including their, um, there's a practice called the municipal consulting, what is it called? The M municipal consulting service. And they have a, a consortium of um, consultants with a wide variety of backgrounds and they have people that they can call on to answer some different questions. And I think one of the things that they end up seeing a lot of is situations like this where there's a, a um, someone leaves um, suddenly, so there's um, a, a director a, a void, or um, there's just questions like when there's a lot of new people on a board, um, so they can come in and, and help in different ways. And um, I just had been observing what's going on with what's happening with the board and thought that that would be a good thing for the board to do is to talk to, just research what some of the options are. And there's also probably a, a lot of retired um, library di directors that are out there that are probably part of some network that can be tapped into and maybe they could be pulled out of retirement to, to do, a, do this as a project to get you through this interim period and maybe help you through the process of finding a, a director to go forward with. Um, but mostly to, to help define some of the issues are get agreement on what those issues are and then um, figure out a plan for how to um, solve some of them and what kind of person you need to help you solve some of them. So it's just, it just seems like there's a lot, lot of things and a lot of ways that there could be some, some help. So I just wanted to offer that to you and I had mentioned it to Carrie and there wasn't a present to speak opportunity. So I just, that's, that's why I'm here. So. 
do you know how we would get in touch with them? Um, yeah, and I see Erica um, nodding. So Erica, as the uh, CEO of the town, has the account and she can call them or email them or um, ask them for assistance and they should be able to help her. I don't know, Erica, I don't know if you've talked to any of them <laughs> uh, recently, but. Oh, yes, they're, they're integral in, in a lot of things we do. We try to use CCM um, and other resources before we hit the town attorney. When all of those groups at our disposal, um, say contact your town attorney as the last resort, that's where we go. But th there, are a lot of, there are a lot of avenues they can look into. Um, they offer different trainings. There are fewer trainings right now, as you can uh, imagine with COVID, but they are still doing some webinars. So um, yeah, you know, if you put together a list of things that, that you're specifically looking for, we can certainly reach out to them on your behalf um, and see how they can help you. They, they, fantastic resources. There's currently at all 169 towns in um, Connecticut are represented by CCM. So um, they reach out to those towns on our behalf. So instead of you going to 14, 15 different libraries that are similar to Willington, they can work it and in that regard um, and try to get some answers and some help for, for us. All right, thank you. The chair recognizes Elena Testa. Yeah, Elena Testa, vice chair. Uh, what's the price for us if we hire a consultant? Is it like we do, do we have to hire a consultant or it's just a, a field for us where we can always reach out for the questions? Well, yeah. I, I think that um, just to talk to them, um, it's probably free to talk to Andy Marola. He's the, the main person um, that would probably be the, the one to, to figure out what the next step is. Um, to actually hire somebody, yes, that there would be a cost to that. But he would probably. I, my guess is that you'd you'd work you through the process of putting together an RFP or some sort of job description and posting that and all that, and then um, seeing what the what the costs, the, what the prices that come in are. So that's what I would imagine would happen. All right. Thank you, Christina. Uh, if you want to do a job search with them? There is a a, a cost to that more um, in-depth they get with you, the higher the cost is, but they can at least put the posting out there through CCM and that's a minimal cost. All right, thank you. The chair recognizes uh, Debbie Linares. Oh, you need to unmute. Oh, Debbie Linares, library coordinator. You guys are aware, I know it's been said, but also through the Connecticut Library, and they'll actually come out you can go to different seminars they'll actually come to library and teach you and talk to you and answer questions as far as their end of you know uh, the library as far as different processes procedures things like that go and it, it's all free and that was through so that, that's something you know the CLA that's something you can pipe into and get all kinds of different information and resources and help and, and like I say, they will actually come and speak with you and you can, you know, share and talk to them if you have questions or concerns or they'll run through with you how things work at their end and how they should be running because of Spina Library at our end. All right. Thank you. Another source. Any other comments? Chair recognizes Elena Testa. Elena Testa, Vice Chair. Um, thank you, Debbie, for reminding. Yes, I actually uh, asked for help from the State Library on quite a few uh, occasions. The lady who is responsible for helping local libraries, Don Lavelle, and uh, I, um, Kerry, shared her information with you on multiple occasions. She's responsible for um, setting up the meetings to help everyone understand what their do what people's duties are obligations are, how it's a, how the library functions even financial questions they'll go through the budget questions through the um, directors uh, and every every employer's job descriptions through everything they will go so I wonder I would like to make a motion now um, to get in touch with a state library um, that Don Lavelle 
who is responsible for that, and set up a, an educational meeting for every library member. So everybody would not be just fearful to look at each other and talk to each other, but would know clearly their responsibilities and what, what they can do, what they cannot do. So I would, I, I would like to make a motion to try to set up a, a training through the state library, through the down level. Thank you. Um, we actually don't need a motion for that. Um, that's something, Elena, that you would like to set up. We can add it to uh, a meeting. I, I can get in touch with them and set it up and get with everybody um, through email to coordinate the available dates, whatever they have. All right. Okay, I'll take it on myself. Um, Jim, are you raising your hand? Is that what I, I see? Okay. Hi, uh, yeah, uh, yes, uh, this is uh, Jim Bulick. I did, I did have my hand up. Um, I know the town has employed uh, shared services uh, rather successfully in, in a couple of different areas. We uh, have a uh, uh, an assessor that we share with another town. We have a building inspector and an animal control officer. It's it's possible that maybe CCM could help us uh, contact uh, neighboring uh, libraries in, in neighboring towns, and perhaps uh, there's somebody who is available uh, that could help us out part time uh, as we try to understand what direction we want to go in. I just want to offer that as a potential chain an opportunity for you guys to explore thank you thank you oh by, by the way jim bulick uh, laurel drive thank you jim all right well that gives us some avenues to explore the next item is discussion of candidates and vote to select an interim director. Um, keeping in mind that this is um, hopefully something very short, uh, the interim position with all these resources coming in. Um, I know that Hope Gove has been acting as interim director. Mm -hmm. um, certainly that's one of the candidates. Um, I understand Joseph Onquist also would like to be considered as a candidate as well. Are there any other candidates? All right, then I, the chair recognizes Elena Testa. Yes, I, um, before Elena Testa, vice chair, uh, before I checked the emails and saw all the recommendations uh, which Joe uh, presented to the board, um, that's another, I wanted to suggest another avenue. Uh, no offendings to hope <laughs> at all. I just think we really need somebody who knows the business. And obviously if somebody knows the business and it's Debbie. So um, I, I would happily consider Debbie, but if Debbie is not willing, then I would uh, before, before Joe, will, I will be ready to talk about that too. But otherwise, I would definitely insist on putting there somebody who knows the business, who knows what they're doing. And my suggestion was um, even to reach out to people who are used to work in our library for years or maybe friends of the library and put somebody who knows what to do. Because to put somebody who is new and has no experience, this is just for us, just like, Let's just close already, you know. So we need somebody with some knowledge. So this is what I wanted to say. So I my my uh, suggestion was uh, also to reach out to people who used to work for years in our library, like um, um, Margaret. I don't know her last name. She lives in Wellington. Or reach out to um, there was a name I forgot. Miss Mrs. Holland, um, uh, Gwen Holland. She's, she has PhD, very smart lady. I did not talk to any of them. They have no idea I even mentioned their name. I'm just saying, so we need somebody who knows what to do, who has experience, who knows the town, who worked here, who has experience. Thank you. Thank you, Elena. The chair recognizes Joy Rona. Yeah, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, um, I also 
would recommend Deb Lanier. Um, I understand that Deb and Hope have been working together and messing together very well to get the job done. I know that Deb has been there for eons of years and has been through many directors and many changes. And I believe to have the ability to fulfill the job for next month once we need her for, along with Hope. So I run it. Sorry. Thank you, Joy. Um, I'm reading messages at the same time. Yeah, sorry. Um, so I'm going to comment and ask questions during this meeting since there's no present to speak. We had not um, made room for that. Um, and at this point, uh, this is not going to be open to public comment. All right. So um, let's open it up for discussion then. We have uh, some good ideas. It's my sense that whatever we decide on tonight will be a short-term thing. Um, obviously, we need to know that there's somebody in the library who can hold down the, the fort for at least, you know, the next couple of weeks while we get things together and find out what resources are available to us. Um, I've also, uh, the, the sense that I have is that uh, Deb and Hope are working well together. Uh, they're, they're a good team. They're able to um, help each other and support each other. Um, that would be my recommendation, that we continue uh, Hope and Deb working in tandem. <laughs> uh, any other comments? Joy, uh, Chair recognizes Elena Testa. Oh. Thank you, Elena Testa, Vice Chair. Well, I'm uh, no offending to Hope at all. I just totally cannot support Hope at this point because she has no experience. She came when the library was closed for the COVID already. She has no library experience uh, while the library functions, so there is no way. I'm sorry. I'm, no offendings. It's just a matter of uh, experience which people have. But um, another way, after, after I saw the recommendations with jo which Joe uh, presented to us, I think we should maybe consider him too. Uh, because he, although he, his recommendations are wonderful, I wanted to reach out to those people who wrote recommendations to him. And now I see that those people recommended him. So we need somebody who knows the business, definitely. And how do, how do you see Kerry, uh, Debbie and Hope? There has to be, we need one responsible person. Not two, not just something, you know, we, we need one person who's going to take responsibility. And the, as we are talking about Debbie, even for two weeks, I think we should really ask her. I already did ask her. Uh, the chair recognizes Kathy Ryan Gidman. That was exactly, Kathy Ryan Gidman, um, Library Board. I was, I was going to say something quite similar, Elena. Um, I'm not clear whether Debbie is interested in the position, and I don't quite know what you mean by having them work in tandem whether they, sh how, how duties are um, divided, how salaries are allocated. Um, I think I would uh, tend toward choosing one sole director too, and someone who's clearly expressed um, interest in the position. Um, and so we do have a few candidates who've, who've done that much so far. All right, um, Hope, can I put you on the spot and ask, I, we have never met, I mean, I think we met you one time. Um, could you, Introduce yourself to us, um, explain, you know, what experience you have in library sciences and running a library. I hate to put you on the spot, but. That's okay. My name's Hope Gove. Um, I did come here on an internship. I've been here for two internships the last couple of months. Um, I am about to get my bachelor's degree in science right now. Um, I am ready to go to library science school in the fall. You know, I have been here with Clee the whole time the library's closed. I was here when the staff wasn't here. He's shown me a lot. Um, you know, I just want to put out like this past week, we've worked together through his directorship. Nobody has come in the library. Nobody has asked if we're all right. Nobody has checked really on the staff. And I think we've done a really great job of holding it together. We just had our 
um, pickups today for people. Everybody was really happy. Um, you know, we just held a friends meeting in the parking lot today. Um, do I know everything? Of course not, but I'm willing to learn. I've been putting in the hours, you know, whether the position needs to be moved or someone or Deb steps up and I'm still learning. You know, I'm willing to stay in the role and learn. I've put in the hours. I've been doing everything I'm told. I'm writing everything down. I'm not overstepping any bounds. Thank you. Oh, I just caught. Hold on. Yeah. Chair recognizes Elena Testa. Elena Testa, Vice Chair. Um, I think now we should hear from Joe too. Um, yep. Uh, the chair recognizes Joe Almquist. Joe, are you there? I think I'm here. Yep, we can. can you hear me? Well, I've been with the Willington Public Library since March of 2019. I have my bachelor's in um, uh, English with literary studies. I also have a minor in mathematics. Um, in the fall, I will actually have my uh, certificate for uh, library technical assistance. Uh, courses that are involved in that are um, library management, cataloging classifications, uh, digital resources, digital media, pretty much any avenue that pertains to library uh, functions. Um, I also manage properties as well, so I'm more, more than familiar with how building operations run and how to keep up with uh, certain types of uh, situations as they occur. Um, I have not only been a resident, but I've also been a patron of the Wilmington Public Library for the past 11 years. Um, I'm more than happy to do whatever I can for our library. I'm not looking for a stepping stone on this. I'm looking to just help out any which way I can. Um, I mean, really, I... I'm familiar with the CLC. I've worked with uh, Don Laval in uh, preparing a, uh, a, um, a grant as far as um, trying to uh, do some planning, which I did have that already procured. It was already all set to go. All we need to do is to finish the application process. Uh, so I'm more than willing to help out any which way I can. All right, thank you. Um, Deb, I can we put you on the spot? Um, it sounds like it's definitely something that people would feel comfortable with you as acting as interim director as well. Could you? you yeah, I, yeah. I, first of all, I'm glad somebody finally uh, gave me some thought for a change. Um, <laughs> it's a joy to work with Hope. She's very intelligent. She's very capable. Things have run very smoothly. It's been a joy to work with her. I don't mind helping her. As far as there being two interims, I don't have to be an interim director. I will just do what I've done and be here for her if you only want one person and not two if you're worried about the pay or whatever. I don't have any issues with that. I, I've been here from the beginning. I care very much about this library. I have helped and, and done things above and beyond what my original job when being hired or as the years have gone by. Um, I don't believe any one of the directors with maybe the exception of Robbie could do their job as well as they did if they didn't have me helping them do it. It's enabled me to grow and learn a lot. No, I don't have the education, but I definitely have the experience and the knowledge and I've used it to help you know, everybody who's come in here, whether it's been uh, new directors or uh, whether it's been anybody, uh, speaking of Joe, his job or the Pages jobs or you know, any job that of anybody that's come in this place that's had been done, um, I've done it. I've done it with them or for them or have to help them. And I think it's just because I've been here so long and uh, part of things. I don't, I don't mind um, doing this for the, you know, time it takes you guys to find somebody to permanently put into the um, position. Um, I've always been and still am about teamwork. I think we have a nice team of people here right now. We all get along really well. We all care. We're not making any more than we're ma we made yesterday. I don't know what tomorrow will bring, but we're still dedicated and uh, very committed. And we work really hard. We, we love our library. We love our town and the community and the people in it. 
and it's not ever been about the money. Otherwise, I don't think any of us would really be here. Um, so I, you know, I when I say to co-do it with with um, hope, right now happens to be if there could be a better uh, time, it would be now because unfortunately I'm not able to do a lot of the things that I would normally do as far as uh, being a program coordinator, director, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's nice that I'm being able to uh, catch up in the rears as far as other things and helping out with COVID and whatnot. Um, so I, 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 I do have the time. I would love to see Hope grow in herself for her future. She has been here learning from Clee. Um, we weren't even around. She, she knows a lot. Don't think she doesn't. Um, he's taught her well. He's even willing to still mentor. I am sure that if I didn't know the answer to a question or we couldn't figure out how to get an answer to something or do something, I, I know Clee would be there if we were to ask um, him a question to help us get through. And I got to tell you, I, I, I probably know more than Clee does. So with a lot of things that, concerning the town and this library. Um, so it's just, a, it's just whether or not you want to uh, trust and invest uh, us doing that you know, job. I, I think we've always done very well. We've, I mean, I think about now going on five directors in the short time I've been here. It's kind of crazy. Um, and, it's, and it's a lot of work on everybody's part. But I think if we keep in mind working together, um, you know, we've done fine and we will continue to do fine. All right, thank I'm you. Sorry. Thank you, Deb. The chair recognizes Kathy Ryan Goodman. Um, yep, Kathy Ryan Goodman, Library Board. Um, I have a question back to you, Joe, and then for you, Joe, and Hope, and Debbie. Um, and uh, Joe, I know you until recently had been an employee there, but aren't currently on staff. And I wonder if you could talk about what led to your departure from the position and um, where that puts you with regard to um, relations um, with the rest of the staff. And then for all three of you, um, since it seems like one of our biggest um, snafus right now is budget and payroll and other financial issues uh, which, you know having a lot of experience with the library doesn't necessarily mean you have the financial experience and i just wonder how comfortable each or any of you feels uh with that end of things and 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 carrie's right we hope that this is a short-term um position but if it if it extends then then we're going to want somebody in that role who can keep a, a uh, you know a very firm eye on how to handle the money and the numbers ends <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. Joe, do you want to respond? As far as the departure goes, uh, as far as I'm aware, I've had no issues with any other employees. Um, my departure, I received a letter from Mr. Roseboro just saying that my services were no longer needed. Um, I've inquired as to why that is so, and uh, I've been responded with there is no derogatory um, information against me. So as far as the departure goes, I'm not exactly sure. There has never been an explanation to that. Um, as far as finances go, I was actually a financial services manager at Ray Seraph and Ford for uh, my remaining year with them, uh, which I loved the job. I would do it all 10 times over again, but it was 70 hours a week. I went to work in the morning. My kids were asleep. I came home. My kids were asleep. You know, six days a week of that, it's kind of, kind of grueling. Um, I've also taken courses on accounting at uh, Eastern Connecticut State University. So I also, again, my minor is in mathematics. So I'm no stranger to numbers. Um, I'm not afraid of it. I'm not intimidated by it by any stretch of the imagination. And I've loved everyone that I've worked with at the library. I love the patrons and I would love to be back there. All right. Thank you, Joe. Um, Kathy, did you want to, could you redirect the questions to Debbie that you were asking? Sure. Um, so Debbie and Hope, um, in the event that you were in this position or role, um, how comfortable do you feel with handling these financial concerns and budgets and expenditures and payroll? To what extent has that been part of your um, spring experience, Hope? And Deb, in your many years there, what, what sort of experience and exposure have you had to those? So is that, or do you want me to address each of them one at a time, Carrie? Um, no, I think that's fine. Okay. Deb, can you answer those? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, I, I have always, um, at the library, 
uh, to this day, even with doing <laughs> the friends meeting. I'm always very conscientious of what money is spent. I think a lot of times money has been spent foolishly here, and I've I've told certain people about it who who were in charge of it to let them know. And I've always I'm always trying to save money. Um, I I came from a large family, and and money is you work hard for it and it goes easily and you have to keep count and track of it. And it's something that's just a part of who I am. And it over it shadows everything that I do, whether it's in my own home with my finances or budgeting, or it has even with the library. A lot of times there, uh, where there have been times where unfortunately my wanting to be, uh, how do you say, um, frugal um, hasn't been, taken into consideration, but I, for a lot of the time, most times have shared it as far as how I can save the library money. There have been times where I have saved the library money that nobody knows about except for the powers that be. So um, that, that, is my, that is my first option. I, I, I get paid very uh, little and it has to go a long ways. And I think the library has very little money and I think it has to go a long way. And I've always done my best to, uh, try to make wise decisions or be of help even when uh, doing the budget at budget time trying to help when people would listen a lot of times people don't want to listen and you can't say anything but I've often uh, thought of ways and have shared ways that we could I, I think sometimes we do spend money foolishly in the library and, and we don't need to spend how we spend you know but I'm that's hasn't been my job or responsibility but if it were to become so I, yeah I could do it easily all right, thank you, Debbie. Any other comments? The chair recognizes Elena Testa. Yeah, I just want um, to clarify a little bit that uh, spend money, it's not just being conservative spender, it's uh, some financial knowledge involved in building up the pie budget, putting it together, counting. It's a lot of computer work, computer program involved in, in this process because the uh, budgeting season for us last year was an absolute nightmare just because the director did not really help us and we really would like this year the director to help us and lead us and know what to do and not for us to figure it out last moment within a couple hours so i think um that's what we should consider that it's knowledge and, and how about hope uh kathy also asked hope uh, the same question. Okay, um, Kathy, no. do you want to direct those questions to Hope as well? Sure thing, um, Kathy Ryan Goodman, Library Board. Hope, how about you and your comfort level and familiarity with numbers and budgets and payrolls and expenditures um, in, in the event that this is not a two week position, but you know, longer? Yeah, um, I've personally had manager experience in the past. You know, I've had a staff, I've had a team, I've done payroll, I've done uh, costs before. Um, am I as experienced? Surely not. But, you know, I'm willing to put in the work. I feel very comfortable with it and especially learning along the way. Um, I feel comfortable with the numbers and trying to work out the budget. You know, it's not something that's completely foreign to me, no. All right, thank you. Uh, Karen Ann, you had a, a, a comment or a question that you wanted to ask? Yeah, this is addressed to Hope. We keep talking about this being a short-term position, but having been on hiring committees before, I know short-term doesn't mean two weeks. It might take several weeks just to get a job description written and then posted, and then you got to get the applications in, etc. Hope, you mentioned that you were going to school in the fall. How would that affect you if you were a chosen to be interim director? I can say that uh, I am going to school uh, Southern Connecticut, but it is online. Um, I've done online schooling for the past five years. Uh, I do have a son that you know is special needs. I'm used to taking on a lot at one time. You know, there's always some kind of meeting or services i'm able to put in place people to watch him i'm able to be here even this past week i've made it work i've been here way beyond the hours that you know i'm getting paid for because i care and i'm willing to invest the work and 
you know, time is not a issue for me. I've been going to school this whole time. I'm a straight A student. I've been, you know, applying myself. That isn't a worry to me if I'm in this position for a couple weeks or however long it takes. You know, I welcome it. This is a learning experience for me. And at the same time, you know, I want to help this place and I want to make it grow. Thank you, Hope. The chair recognizes Elena Testa. Elena Testa, uh, just to be fair, I want uh, for the public to, um, I think it's important for the public, for those who are present, for those who are going to be watching, um, to know that uh, quite a few very serious people who were historically connected with our uh, library, especially during the when the library was during the success, uh, some day, very successful library directors and uh, the president of our friends. Um, they recommended Joe Almquist and they, I read their recommendations. I, as I know Joe personally, but I would never recommend him myself because I have no idea his professional level and how he's working. But the people who recommended Joe, I think they really have value there, the names of those people. And I think we shouldn't ignore that either. I think we should consider it very careful too. And the, again, as uh, Karen Ann pointed out, uh, that um, it could be a much longer process. So how about um, my suggestion? Joe Anquist sounds like really much more professionally equipped for this position with a serious recommendations. Uh, from people who I personally have very high esteem in our town uh, because they are, um, their work with the library was very fruitful. The library was in a perfect condition. And as they recommend Joe, I would really recommend to, uh, to consider him at this point over other candidates, especially to check maybe he will show himself as a good director and maybe it will simplify for us things in the future, especially as he's at, very soon he's going to be qualified with the master degree requirement, uh, whatever the requirements we have. So I'm just, I'm suggesting to consider Joe um, mostly from the point of the references which he provided us. Thank you. Thank you, Elena. Um, I do want to point out that all but two of those references are over a year old and were collected for a previous position he was applying for. That's not to say that those people would not happily recommend him again, but they were not written for this particular job at this particular time. So I think that's important to note that some of them are, are well over a year old. The chair recognizes Kathy Ryan Goodman. Um, Kathy Ryan Goodman, Library Board. <clears throat> um, what does the Library Board budget look like um, for any one of these three positions? Is it the same salary regardless of who would take over the position? And, and what is that salary? What, what does this do to our budget? for the short or, or medium term? That's a good question. Um, I know that uh, the current emergency interim director salary is $22.50 an hour. Um, we definitely would have to sit down, look at the budget, see what that does in terms of us being able to remain solvent and not end up in a $10,000 hole again. The chair recognizes Elena Testa. Elena Testa, vice chair. Um, I would also, I know we have so many meetings, but I think we need uh, as soon as possible another meeting. Now we have the um, uh, set amount of money for the next year fiscal, fiscal year budget. I think we need to recount everything before we come out with a final uh, amount which we can give to the interim director or future director. I think we need to know what's going on with our budget. Recount, adjust, and come out with a real amount which we can give to the interim director or director. So it's kind of, uh, we probably will have to have another budget meeting. Um, I, I don't know about anyone else. We have had far too many meetings for volunteer positions. Um, I think that the time between now and our next regularly scheduled meeting, the second Friday in July, um, 
might Karen Ann might give you a little bit of, of time to look at the, the numbers now that you have a better idea of what you're supposed to be doing as treasurer, come back and talk with us then. Um, it's my suggestion that we keep hope and Debbie in the, the current position that they have been working together at our next regularly scheduled meeting in July, we will have a better grasp. We can look at our, our finances, see what we're able to offer and move from there. The chair recognizes Joy Rona. I would also like to make mention, can you hear me? Joy yeah. Rona, secretary? Yeah, we can hear you. I would, uh, Joy Rona, secretary. I would also like to make mention to the board to let them know that Joe had applied for the director position last year with the old board and we did not select him. Thank you, that's noted. The chair recognizes Elena Testa. Elena Testa, I cannot agree uh, with a statement to leave Debian Hope. Uh, there has to be one person responsible for running the library not nothing like teamwork we need to have one person who takes full responsibilities if and it's up to that person if he is using any help or not so we have one salary one position and we need to have one person for that particular position so i uh, to to talk about debbie and hope who is who who is interim who is helper who, let's let's make it uh, more business like so I personally think uh, Joe Alcrest is going to be much more productive for our library with the knowledge which he has, even from the point of uh, using the computer programs. But if we go with uh, Debbie and Hope, I would definitely go with Debbie. Uh, this is my position. All right, thank you. The chair recognizes Joy Rona. Um, I unfortunately don't agree with you, Elena. Um, Deb has been in the library for over a decade, has loads of experience. Hope is there also learning. How else is someone supposed to learn without somebody to help them? Um, I see both of them working together just fine. Like Deb says, he's been there through multiple directors. I would vote for both Deb. Hope and Deb. I know Deb said that she wouldn't take a salary increase. That's fine. As long as the job gets done, I don't see why it can't be done by two people. Thank you, Joy. Any other comments? Um, I personally find it difficult to understand somebody who has just been let go from employment in the library is now applying for a position of authority in the library um, especially without knowing what's going on um, i would suggest then that we keep things as they are hope is the official interim director whatever help or guidance she chooses to seek from debbie is up to her discretion and we keep hope as in the position that she's at. Uh, the chair recognizes Elena Testa. So you, uh, I think we need to make a motion to appoint whoever you suggest to appoint to vote for that person. If it doesn't get, he doesn't. That person doesn't get the majority, then we go to another person. So uh, not just it. It has to be. Uh, finalized somehow so that's up to you. yes thank you so um, I make a motion that we continue Hope Gove as the interim director a second. Joy Rona seconds is called to a vote all those in favor of keeping Hope Gove as interim director please indicate by saying aye and keeping aye. hand up so I can see I am um, that's one two three all those opposed say nay nay abstentions all right so the motion passes hope 
thank you. Um, again, please accept my apologies on behalf of the board that, that none of us did check up on you and, and see how you guys were doing. Um, I, I know that you guys were just as blindsided by the, the director's departure as, as we were. Um, I'm sure you guys have you've been scrambling just to stand still. From what we see, you've been doing a great job. We thank you. Um, of course, you have you know our support. Um, so the next order of business then is the approval of minutes from February, April, and June. Um, we'll do this one at a time. We'll look at the February minutes. Are there any comments on the February minutes? I make a motion to approve the minutes from February. Is there a second? Second. All right, second, thank you. Let's take it to a vote. All in favor of approving the February minutes, please indicate by raising your hand and saying aye. Aye. All right, that's Kathy Ryan Gidman, Sarah Jean, Joy Rona, Elena Testa, Carrie Donaldson. Karen Ann, did you vote? I, yeah, I, I voted on the last one too, but I don't think you guys got that either. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. No, Can you I, it's in the I, what? Uh, for the, the previous vote for the, the motion about keeping hope as interim director? Yeah, I, I said I, but I don't think anybody heard me. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. So you said I as well. Okay. Thank you. Um, the chair recognizes Joy Rona. Sorry, Lorna, Secretary. Karen, can you just tell me who seconded the minutes? Um, oh, Karen did. Okay, thank you. Yep. <laughs> All right, so now the motion is to approve the minutes from April. Do I have a second? Uh, second. <clears throat> okay. Oh, we have amendments there. Uh, the Chair recognizes Elena Testa. Sorry, Elena, what? Yeah, Elena Testa, Vice Chair. Uh, I'm trying to find the email. I think I emailed you the amendments, as in corrections, which I found in that meeting. I'm trying to find it now. Okay, yep, yep. Uh, so, um, so uh, then correction number one uh, that that we voted not to uh, post um, bylaws and policies when they are corrected, but we voted to post them as they are. Oh, yes, for the, the June minutes. <laughs> Is that what you're talking about? Yes, that's, okay. that's what we are talking now about June minutes. Um, I think that's what we're doing April. Oh, doing well, April. I'm sorry. That's okay. I I'm That's sorry, okay. then so I'm all set. We, I'm sorry, I concentrated. All right, so uh, we'll do April minutes. Uh, the motion is to approve April minutes. Do I have a second? Okay. Do I run a second? All those in favor of approving April minutes, please raise your hand, say aye. 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 Um, it looks like unanimous. Okay, now for June minutes, Elena, the mm -hmm. corrections that you wanted to see? Yeah, the corrections that uh, we voted, and they, first of all, there was there was a motion made to receive um, uh, to to download our bylaws and policies to the library website as they are as soon as possible, not when they are fixed. That was number one. Second, there was no uh, vote um, mentioned who voted how. Joy, did if you got my email, I clearly stated it there. Yeah, did I have it. my email. Yeah, who voted yes, who voted no? If you check it, that's how I remember it. I hope you all looked through it. And second, um, uh, there was the there was a mentioning, there was an announcement made by the chair that the director appointed Hope as an interim director, and there was a whole conversation on this point. So we just have to make sure that it's there, that director appointed Hope and uh, as an interim director. I would like it to be added to the minutes. All right, thank you, Elena. Thank you. 
So then the motion, I'll make a motion to approve the June minutes with the corrections brought up by Elena. Do I have a second? Second. Kathy seconds. All in favor, say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Okay. All right. I believe that catches us up on minutes. Um, the next meeting date, um, I, as I said before, I think that we need to start keeping to our monthly meetings in order to prevent burnout, make sure that, that we have robust meetings when we have them. Um, so the, the next meeting date will be the one that is scheduled, filed with the town, the second Friday in July. Um, I believe at six or seven, I'm not sure. Six or seven will be the first Friday. It's at, it's at six o'clock, Carrie. Oh, six or seven o'clock, okay. Thank you. July 10th, July 10th six o'clock. All right. Um, that said, I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Is there a second? Joy seconds, all in favor of adjourning, say aye. Hi. Hi. All right. Excellent. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.